Hey everyone, I am TH Pine and welcome to Root. What is Root, you ask? I like to call it a very blue cyber espionage stealth action game. It's gonna release on the 16th of November and this is what it looks like. So the game takes place in a computer, so everything looks very, well, abstract, I guess. Uh, so we're in a computer um, and we're, well, we're trying to hack it basically and do some cyber terrorism, I guess. And um, it's a stealth game, so for the most part we try to not be caught, but um, you can fight in this game as well, so it's not a pure stealth game. Um, so this is a guard. The guards are supposed to be computer programs, and uh, they will try to protect the place. And they're very aggressive. If they see or hear you, they will go after you. So you noticed uh, me slowing down. So you have a sneaking or running mode, which you can switch by pressing tap, and you can see the indicator in the lower right. And if I run, I make noises. If you sneak, you're completely silent, but you're slow. And, um, well, but they will not hear you, so that's good. If I run now, they will, they, he will turn around and instantly shoot me. I'm not instantly dead. You can see I have 100 health points in the lower left. Uh, but, but he would attack me, which is bad. So let's, let's demonstrate how to take him out. So I have a blackjack. It's important to hit him in the neck or on the head to take him out. And from behind. If you, if you hit him somewhere else, he will not fall over. So to take him out, we hit him here and he goes down. And we should be able to pick up, pick up his pistol. No, we're not. Where's his pistol? Where did this? Oh, I have it in my hand already. Um, I'm, I'm a dummy. Um, yeah, so I got his pistol, which is good. So now we have a weapon. <laughs> God, that was so stupid. Uh, anyway, so uh, let, let's continue, shall we? So we go over here. Uh, another important mechanic in this game is leaning. So you can lean by pressing E or Q. It would be nice to have a toggle for that. For some reason, you don't. You have a toggle for um, crouching, and you have a toggle for the sneak and run mode, but you don't have a toggle for leaning, which is unfortunate, because um, you have to lean quite a lot and sometimes move by leaning, uh, which I will demonstrate in the next moment, actually, after we go through this door. And it, it would be nice to have a toggle for that. So uh, doors, if you want to approach doors in this game, you usually want to do this. You go next to the door, you press F to open it, then you hold the lean button, and you crawl around it slowly and trying uh, and f f like trying to avoid guards. Because how leaning in this game works is actually that it will not affect your vision box. So if they can't see you like this, they will not see you like this. Like this doesn't change your visibility basically. Which allows you to look um, f around corners without being seen. Um, that's actually one of the interesting things I want to talk about in this game. So in... Fuck he saw me because I'm an idiot. Uh, let's try to trick him. That worked. So he's gonna respawn now, I imagine, because that's what they do. I'm gonna talk about that later. Ah, I respawn behind me. That's that's bad. <laughs> well, we just shot him, so that's fine as well. Uh, that will probably attract more enemies, though. Uh, I hear him walking. Uh, I think he's coming from there. There we go. So shooting can be very effective as well. Let's talk about the about the leaning thing first though. So usually what you want to do in a stealth game is uh, give the player an ability to see the, uh, the guards without being seen. Um, why is that important? Because if you don't, uh, then you run around the corner and there's a guard facing your direction and he instantly sees you and you can't do anything about it because you don't know he was there. So usually you want to give the player an ability to see the opponent without being seen. Um, and there are different ways of doing that. So a lot of stealth games do that with perspective. So for example in a 2D or three, um, 2D stealth game or in a third person stealth game, you can see things your character can't, which gives you the same effect. Um, so that was not a stealthy approach, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, it worked. I'm almost dead though, so I have to be careful now. Um, There was a door going... I hear a door, I'm a little scared. There might be an enemy here. There he is, I'm probably... No, I wasn't... I'm not dead, okay, I was lucky. So, what was I saying? Yeah, okay, so there are different ways of doing that. So some, a lot of stealth games are doing it with perspective. In a first person game though, you have to be a little bit... Like, you have to use a different mechanic. Uh, you could, for example, have a gadget that allows you to see through walls or something like that. In this game, it works differently. You have two, two mechanics. One is the leaning, which allows you to see stuff without being seen. And the other um, mechanic is that all of the stuff is transparent to you. So you can see through desks and stuff, but your opponents can actually not. So they will not see you if you're hiding behind the desk, but you can observe them through the desk. Which, which is, in my opinion, a very elegant way of solving um, or, or of, of dealing with that situation. And um, so I, I kind of like that. I, I think that's a good way. 
and makes for an interesting stealth game, in my opinion. So, okay, let's talk about the enemies a little bit. So, the guards are supposed to be computer programs. Uh, hmm, okay, I guess we have to wait or kill him. But that's risky, we're on 10 health. <laughs> I, I guess we wait. So, the guards are computer programs, and um, they're pretty predictable, which makes sense if they're programs. So, they're pretty predictable. If they see or hear you, they will instantly turn around and attack you. And if you run away, they will... Uh, I'm not sure how far he's going, actually. Well, actually... Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to observe. If I can spot it. Okay, he's stopping there. That's good. So... Let's actually blackjack him. Leave the level. So, if you run away, they will go to the spot where they saw or, hear or heard you. And... Oops. And then look around for a few seconds. And then actually... Uh, then actually respawn. And restart their patrol path. So that's that's pretty much what they do all the time. So they're very predictable, but they're not like they're not super clever. Uh, that's a stupid sound bug. The game has some silly sound bugs. The music just gets super loud from time to time. I'm not sure why that is. Anyway, so um, they're not super clever, but they're dangerous. They're still they're, they're pretty stupid actually, but they're super dangerous still because they are really like they really really easily see you. For example, if you're not completely hidden. Uh, but not on a, in an unfair way. Oops, uh, that might have been dangerous Because probably someone heard that shot. Yep, there we go. Okay, that was not a good start But I, I guess we go the action route again That's a shame uh, I could run away I'm Not sure if he's he might have seen me not sure No, apparently he didn't So he's probably respawning in a moment. Okay, we can see it through the through the floor Okay, so we can try to be stealthy again, I guess. <laughs> Let's pick up that pistol. Maybe not. There we go. <laughs> Got it. Um. So yeah, they're 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 dangerous, but not unfair, in my opinion. So that's that's yeah. I think I think the enemies are actually pretty good. Um, they're like the variety is not too huge. Um, basically, you have guards all the time. There are a few other things. The sound in this van is super loud as well for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on with that. So most of them are guards. There, there are some robots and some super enemies and stuff like that. But most of them are guards. Uh, but they're like they're different guards. Some have helmets, which make which makes it harder to kill them. Um, some have different weapons, like a shotgun. Um, actually, well, there are only two different weapons. Like there are three weapons in the game: the blackjack, the pistol, and the shotgun. So uh, weapon variety variety is not too big on the opponents. Uh, but the guards can have uh, shields as well. Which makes actually really hard to t kill them because they hide pretty well behind those shields. Uh, okay, there he is. Ah, don't run. Ooh, that was close. Okay, I think we just sneak by. I don't think he hears doors. No, he doesn't. Good. So yeah, weapon variety, variety, and opponent variety is not too great in this game. Uh, but like, the guards are are reasonably different so that makes sense but there could be more weapons then again it's not primarily a shooter it's primarily a stealth game uh it's it's a shooter as well there like as i mentioned well did i mention no i didn't mention yet the game is very open about how you approach it you can go stealthy or you can go very um aggressive as well as you could see uh, because i failed my stealth attempt so far so i played very aggressive so far in this uh video um that's a bad pattern. I guess we have to wait for a few seconds. Um, and the game is actually not judging you at all on your playstyle, so it doesn't matter how you play. Uh, if you reach, it, if you reach the the final elevator of the level, you beat the level. That's it. There's no score, nothing, no disadvantage for anything. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you go quick or if you go slow, it doesn't matter if you take out all the enemies or if you go completely hidden. It doesn't matter if you have, have 10 HP left or 100. If you beat the level, you did beat the level. Where did he go? Oh, there's an... Oh, yeah, there. Uh, well, he's turning around. God damn it. Should have, should have taken the opportunity, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's really cool, I think, because, yeah, it doesn't judge you at all and it, it lets you play... How you prefer to play and um, yeah it actually throws you in different situations as well because one of the the, the game is really strong the moment you actually fail your stealth uh, stealthy approach because 
uh, it actually gets really interesting because it's not like it's not an instant failure state. You have reasonable ways of still escaping or just fighting your way out. But it, it makes it like a different challenge at that point. And um, I think the game is really at its best when you actually fail your stealth approach. <laughs> so uh, that's really cool. Uh, you can inc completely ignore stealth if you're good at shooting. Uh, which might be my biggest complaint actually about that because about that topic because um, we can open this because we found the key card earlier uh, because like there could be a more a bigger incentive for uh, for being stealthy because sometimes it's just too effective to just shoot everyone especially if you have the shotgun which I have now uh, I'm not sure where I have to go might be this way I'm not sure. Oh, no, it's that way. Oh, freaking open the door. Okay, we, I guess we take him out with the shoddy. I actually could have hidden in this room, maybe. Well, we just got him, so there we go. So, yeah, the shotgun is very effective. And the pistol is pretty effective as well if, you, if you're if used to, like, if you're consistently landing headshots. So, there could be a little bit more incentive to be s stealthy. But then again, you can't just decide for yourself that you want to play stealthy. Stop running. Um, or you cannot and just go aggressive. So that's pretty good. Uh, I like it. It's that the game's so open about that topic. Ugh. Wait, is he coming? Oh, he's coming around. Okay, I guess we kill him then. There we go. <laughs> oh no, another one! Uh, a little too far away for a shotgun. Okay, it worked anyway. They cannot shoot for half a second or so when you hit them. So that's good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really bad at stealth apparently. <laughs> well, if I don't record. Um, I'm a little better, but while recording, I fail to fail fail to go stealthy quite a bit. So, not sure what's wrong with that? Um, is that the room we have to go? Yeah, that's the room. Probably the opponent is. No, there's another one. Oh, again. Oh, two. Um, um. Okay, let's see. We can somehow avoid them without shooting them. So he doesn't see me. So he's looking around. Then he will respawn. He just did. So let's see if we can get through this stealthy. So where are they? Let's try to figure that out. One is over there. I'm not even sure where I have to go. The level design can be a little maze-like, especially in later levels. By the way, if you die, you have to... Why is there a pistol laying around? Well, I take it. Um, if you die, you have to restart the whole level, which can be a little annoying in some levels. Uh, but at the same time, it's a good it's a good way of punishing your fails. Oh god damn it! Okay, just kill them. I guess I'm down to 55 health. That should be enough to get to the level. Yeah, there's the elevator. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm bad at stealth apparently. <laughs> what the hell is going on? So anyway, yeah. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about? Well, not really. Like, I really appreciate the game. Uh, it's, it's a really good game, in my opinion. It's a lot of fun. Um, there are some complaints I said. To, the sound issues are a problem. Um, sometimes, like, just shooting your way out is a little too easy, as you could see in this level perfectly. <laughs> uh, it would be nice to have some sort of orientation aid in some levels. Like, I don't... I don't think a map would be a good idea because the, the levels are like it's some a part of the game is figuring out how is this level looking like in a lot of level like levels are designed in a way that you have to like they're ex that you don't have to die <laughs> but they're expecting you to fail a few times and figuring out where to go um, how can I get through this easily and uh, how can I outplay the opponents and um, I can't actually oh that's that level. Oh yeah, I can show you one more enemy actually, um, and it would be nice to have like that's that's why I don't think it would be good to have a map, but it would be nice to have some some help, like for example a compass or something. Uh, where is that guy? There's one more enemy. Uh, I can hear him. Uh, that's a new enemy type, and he can't see you as long as you don't move. Uh, he can't see me as long as I move. Oh, that might be a different level actually, but it sounds like those. I'm not sure. Might be something else, that sound, I don't know. Anyway, so what was I, what was I saying? Uh, I don't know. I forgot. But <laughs> I think I talked about most of the stuff I wanted to talk. So let's actually wrap this up. Let's take a look at the option menu. Um, 
So, oh yeah, I was talking about <laughs> orientation help. So it would be nice to have a compass or something, or make the rooms look more more different to each other. So like have different colors on the walls or something like that. Because sometimes it's really easy to just lose, lo just like lose, lose yourself in the level somewhere and don't know where to go. Um, so it would be nice to have some help, I guess. But it works as well. Like you just have to in feel of just have to try a few times until you figure out where you have to go actually. Um, so that's fine. So let's take a look at the option menu. Um, it's actually a pretty good option menu. It's missing one thing, which is um, uh, full uh, borderless window mode. But besides that, we have pretty much everything you want and a bunch of stuff more than that. So we have field of use slider, which is cool. A uh, good thing to have in a first person game. Uh, most sensitivity, pretty important as well. Obviously, you can switch uh, toggle for sneak and crouch. For some reason, as I mentioned earlier, you can't do that for lean, which would be very useful. Um, run by default, on or off, and you can turn off the story if you're not. Just I, I completely skipped it in the video, as you could see. Uh, but there's some interesting story going on actually, so uh, it, it's worth reading. But if you don't care, you can just turn it off. You can rebind all the keys if you want to. No, this looks like way more keys than, than there should be. Oh yeah, there's a shoulder tab. I never tried that. I'm actually not like. Do they turn around then? What's the point? I don't know. Uh, so what else? Um, you can change. It has three different texture. Uh, um, presets, uh, anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, and you can turn off VSync if you want to. And which is what one feature which is really cool is uh, set color preference. You can completely change the look of the game. So I said the game is very blue in the beginning. Uh, well, let, let's just make it very red, shall we? So something like that, for example. Uh, we, we get out here and we zoom, and everything is red. Ta da! <laughs> It's probably not a good idea uh, if you keep in mind that the opponents are red, so that that might be a dumb idea. But it's cool that you can do that. Let's switch back to the. F Actually, I'm not sure if that's is that setting back to. No, it doesn't. I should have. Anyway, game is red now. I'm fine. <laughs> um, you have different sound sliders, actually a master volume slider and three different sliders for SFX, m music and ambient, which is really good and you can mute everything if you want to as well. So yeah, the option menu is really good except for no bottles window. Um, uh, you can set resolution options, there's a launcher before the game, uh, it would be nice to have them in here, but in launcher it works as well, but as I said, no borderless window, and no toggle button for, for, uh, leaning, which is kind of bad, but it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. So overall, I really recommend the game, I really like it, um, let's discard all the changes, go to the main menu. So I really like the game, um, it's called Root. It's a really good style of action game, in my opinion, uh, with an interesting story as well, actually, and an interesting setting in a computer. <laughs> um, it, it gives you this, or at least me, this 80s, 80s sci-fi computer vibe, <laughs> because that's like that's exactly how in the 80s or early 90s people assumed it looks inside of a computer. So uh, I kind of like that. And um, yeah, it's gonna go uh, into release on the 16th of November. I will put some links in the description below. Um, I'm TH Pine. Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun and see you next time.